Hello and welcome to uh, Sonic Lab Special. You may remember we've had David Ireland here before. Uh, he's the kind of IRA king, the European IRA specialist. And we have a bit of a treat today because we've got the new IRA digital modules. Not yes. only do we have the uh, System 1M, but we've got the, uh, the new, what is, what is this range called? Uh, they're called the EFX series. EFX series, yeah. right. And all with their individual names there. Well, what we're going to do is actually start by looking at the System 1, and then in another part, we're going to look at the uh, EFX range. So uh, if you want to find out about the System 1M, keep watching. <laughs> right. So tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on here. This is in a, a, a standard Eurorack enclosure, right? Yeah, so as you can see, the System 1M is basically the modular rack version of the System 1. Right, obviously uh, no keyboard. Yeah. No, no scatter wheel, wheel. Yeah. Uh, but everything else is about the same, but we've got this connectivity across the top, right? Yeah, exactly. So you have a bunch of uh, audio inputs and outputs and uh, CV inputs and outputs as well. So uh, you have separate outputs for the oscillators, for instance. You even have an external input here. So if you want to put in an audio, external audio signal, that's fine as well. And that will uh, come on the sub oscillator knob there. Right. But yeah. uh, so red is audio. Yeah. And blue, that's CV, presumably. Yeah, yeah? exactly. And it's standard, is, is it uh, Eurorack format CV? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Standard. So uh, one of the big questions is obviously yeah. going to be power, because this is a big chunk of hardware to yeah. be running in. Uh, what does it need? Anything special? Well, you can obviously run it with a standard uh, Roland PSD adapter, but also you can run it from Eurorack power uh, with an included, actually, adapter cable. Ah, because that was one of the questions. So you've got a box header to whatever, 9-volt input. That's exactly. So right. it just converts with a small adapter that's included. Uh, and it does uh, require a bit of power. It takes uh, 700 milliamps. Right. So, so you would need a pretty powerful power supply uh, if you're using this together. So with you're going to you're going to need a power a, a, a rack enclosure that's probably you know not maybe one of the cheapest in the range, yeah, but somewhere yeah, exactly. up there. Because but but I suppose I mean in terms of how many if you had individual racks that might just be the whole lot all in one go, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, um, uh, also, we're actually working on a power solution for this as well, but I don't have any official uh, information about that yet. And th but this can run uh, as a desktop unit or a 19-inch rack as well, is yes, that correct? Yes, absolutely. So, you have obviously standard Euro rack mounts, but also it has a very nice tilted design. So, if you want to use it for a, as a tabletop, that's fine too. And I'm sure we can find a, a, a picture to cut away to. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to take it out of the yeah. rack here, but... And uh, also 19-inch uh, rack rails are included, so if you want to mount it as a 19-inch, that's fine as well. Right, okay, so, uh, um, but apart from that, we're talking the same, we've got eight memories. Yeah. We've got the plug out as well? Yeah, currently. Uh, so the thing is, we just released the uh, 1.2 update for the System 1 keyboard, right? which gives you six additional waveforms and also 64 patch memories. So you have a lot more memory to work with now. I mean, is that um, available in this as well? It's not available yet, but it's a pending update. Uh, right. Regarding the details of that update, we'll have to get back to you on that. So have we got the additional waveforms and memories in this yet? or? Um, well, there's an update pending for this one, so we don't have the update 100% um, official yet, but I do happen to have the new waveforms in it. Oh, right. Well, um, do we know kind of roughly what those are? Yes, absolutely. Um, I can show you a few examples. Yeah, let's see. Uh, we can start with number one, which is the noise saw. Right. So that's essentially a sawtooth, but it's kind of animated, uh, more of a kind of analog emulation, so it's more live, basically. Um, so we can hear, listen to how that sounds. Here. So it's like a sort of uh, fractious. <laughs> yeah, say, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and then we've got a bunch of other waveforms as well, right? Yeah. Uh, so we can go to number two here, which is um, logical operation. Uh, right. It's a very interesting waveform. It's actually a combination of several different waveforms at the same time, and it gives you a very gritty kind sort of, of hard edge sync kind of yeah. vibe almost. Yeah. Something like that. And. Uh, Turn the collar knob there. You get a really, really nice grit to it. It's kind of got very 303 bit crush kind of vibe, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, presumably there are some other ones as well. Absolutely. Go to number three, which is a uh, FM, FM basically, FM synthesis. Right. So one modulates the other, I guess. Right. And also we have FM combined with sync. Sliced, yeah. slices through a mix. Okay. And number five is my favorite, which is the vowel waveform. So this gives you this kind of vocal vibe. 
I turn, turn one of them down here. If we go to the color knob here, we can uh, control the positioning of the waveform, so you get kind of make you can kind of make it talk like this. And of course, if you add some LFO. Right. Well, that brings me back to another question, which yeah. is, you know, the patch points that we've got going on in here, have we got access to things like the color? I mean, we've, there's not masses and masses of uh, modulation source uh, destinations in here, but I mean, we're opening up the kind of control of the basic elements. So like, for instance, we can't get the cross, the cross model, the color, but we could modulate them via an LFO and then take that in. Is that, is that how you would route? Could you, could you route yeah. the color from an external modulation source in, in your Euro rack? Yeah, so what you would do is uh, the color knob can be modulated here. You just choose uh, the modulation oh, right. source. So you just set that to LFO and then you send an external LFO in. Ah, uh, okay, so that could be a control voltage of any kind. Right, yeah. okay, so it, it, it opens it up in a reasonable amount. Okay, um, and how do you get to those extra waveforms? Because I know there are a few sort of key commands to get to some of the new iterations of... Uh, yeah, it's quite simple. You just hold the legato button and then you turn the, the waveform knob. Right. So then you have the extra six there because there's already six uh, notches. Gotcha, there. oh, yeah. okay. Um, so we've also got the USB on the top panel on the front, yeah. right? Um, what in terms of other connectivity, because the, uh, the System 1 also had some MIDI capabilities, didn't it, as well? So we've just got a single MIDI and audio out of the USB on the front. Is there a, a duplication of that on the back as yeah, well? Yeah, there's a USB in the back as well. There's also two MIDI inputs, so you have MIDI on the side and also on the back. And they're just mirroring all the same ports. We don't actually have more ports. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. It's just a mirror. Okay, um, so I guess it's really, you know, when, when's this going to be available? I mean, it's not quite here yet, although I am hearing of some people getting hold of them. When, uh, do you know when they're coming? Yeah, this is going to be around June, July, somewhere around so there. So pretty soon, right? Yeah, yeah. And we, I know you, there was an announcement that the System 1 keyboard version dropped in price. Is this going to be around the same price as the original? Do you have that pricing yes. information? Yes, it's the same price as the original. So I guess some people might say, well, how come this is more expensive than the one with the keyboard? But I guess... Um, with all that CV capabilities, that requires more I.O., right? Yeah, I mean, it's a, there's a huge difference in connectivity, of course. And you can also create entirely new sounds this way that you would never ever be able to do with a normal System 1. I guess because you can patch internally from within yeah, the Yeah, I mean, you can send an oscillator into the gate input and so on, and you create really interesting kind of feedbacky sounds uh, in various kinds of ways. Um, also, if, for instance, if you want to send an external uh, signal into the external input, and you can, you might want to send an external signal into an SH101 car filter and things like that. Uh, obviously, you were able to do ah, that. All right, before. so because you can take the oscillators out separately. Yeah. And, right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And with the plug out technology, it's exactly the same. So you flip yeah. between the plug out or the. And of course, with the memories, with the expanded memories that are coming to this, there's, you say there's 64. Is that 64 for the plug out and 64 for the, uh, the main synth, or is it shared between them? Yes, absolutely. It's 64 for each. So 64 for the plug out patches and 64 for the system one patches. Okay, right. Yeah. So uh, you're just going to play us out a little bit. I'm just curious how this is set up, because you're not using MIDI at all in this, and you're using yeah. what, the TB3 yes. as the sequencer effect? Yeah, exactly. So I have a TB3 synchronized uh, with a TR8, which I can just start yeah. like this. And the TB3 is sending MIDI to the SBX1. Uh, so now the SBX1 is converting everything to CV and gates. Right, which is driving the system one. Yeah. M, also, right. I have an external clock coming out uh, from the SBX1 at the same time, uh, okay. which I can send to the module. So you're going to play us out with a little bit of everything again yeah. going on yeah. here. Uh, and obviously, um, if you want to see what's going on with the EFX range, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Take it away, David. Cheers.